Hey, this is Chris and Chris. Now we're going to do a movie review today. Um, this movie was, ooh, what year was it made? I think 1989. 89, yeah, that sounds about right. And it's called Kickboxer with uh, John Claude Van Damme and uh was it michael michelle wheezy or something was he yeah and dennis alexio who is in jail by the way dennis alexio is doing a stint for month for money laundering and a, cu a couple of other things i believe yeah anyway he was a uh a champion kickboxer mm -hmm. and uh just to show you a small clip this is the uh intro just going to show you like a real quick intro to it So the opening credit is um uh what's that guy's name? Uh well the song is Streets of Siam. Mm hmm Which I mean that's that's kind of a fitting song given the fact that it's supposed to be filmed in Thai in Thailand. Which yeah. originally was called Siam way way back when. And I guess a lot of the locals still uh, consider Tha uh, Thailand as Siam. Mm hmm But some other guy named Dennis Chan plays in it, too. I believe that's uh, Uncle Zian. In yeah. Let's see here. Let's see if we can find another part of this. We can show you. I think it's very stereotypical of Thailand, though, especially this one. Showing it really, really poor. Yeah. <laughs> Any input on these parts? <laughs> uh, I guess the women there have to make a, a living somehow. Speaking of which, the next part that, come, that comes up will show a clip of that too. <laughs> Once they get off the boat and stuff. Oh, this is what Thailand's really, really about. Uh, besides kickboxing, of course. <laughs> or Muay I should call it. That's what they call it. But uh, this is what many of the locals go to visit Thailand for. That's right here. <laughs> so check out the local talent. Which is kind of fitting. That's the first thing he does when he gets there is picks up one of the local women. <laughs> Thinking it's a hard feat when anybody with 20 bucks could probably get, get a chip. <laughs> and that cheesy smile like, yeah, I got her. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think? You think that's uh, stereotypical of Thailand? 
Yeah, I do. From what I hear, man, you can live like a, a freaking drug king uh, kingpin there on less than two grand a month. Hmm. You can barely afford a one a one bedroom apartment here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a really good movie, though. I mean, besides all the the stereotypes and stuff, um, it's a pretty good movie. I think. Yeah. The next part shows. um, What was the part that came after that? Oh yeah, when they're in the park train, in the park train, uh, doing the training. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, what was that line we were so so fond of? Uh, <laughs> they could never get along, but I'm glad we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they chose like the right mix of ca- like a pe- a people to play these characters. Yeah. Like Dan with his Bel- like like Belgian accent and Dennis Alexio, a champion ca- uh, kickboxer. Let's see here, kickboxers. Shoot, I'm trying trying to find that first fight. That's Eric, right? The one that plays the first fight, that's Eric Sloan. Yeah. uh, Eric Lutonko, here we go. Yeah, here we go. As you can tell, he's not very impressed with his champ, the champion belt. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, this is like sending in Mike Tyson to fight a freaking cage fighter. Yeah. And he's just going to come out and attack him. He ain't even got, he doesn't even have gloves on. But well, that was pretty quick, getting him down. Yeah, and the second round with that series of knees to the midsection. Yeah. Ooh. That's enough to put, put, uh, to put somebody out dead. And his brother's trying to get him to quit. And it's about to be over in like 10 seconds. It's 
tries throwing in the towel, but he kicks it and snaps his back. Mm. Well, they at least try to get it right with him twi a twitching on the ground like he's out of the You know, the one thing, you know, being the EM and EMT, one thing that they didn't show in this, which is kind of strange, is the fact that if you have a back injury like that, like a, a broken like spinal column, you get what's called a priapism, which is a erection, like a very, very hard, stiff erection that, that's just going to stay there. I mean, if they wanted it to look real, I mean, come on, they could have at least put some something in the guy's pants to make it look like you got one. With a back, yeah. especially. <laughs> Maybe that's why he was tw twitching on the ground. He was trying, he was trying to get her, and it was kind of flopping him up and down like a fish or something. Yeah, who knows. But yeah, anyway, after, after that part, you know, he ends up going to the hospital and uh, yeah. See him. See if I Ask a local uh, gym, like uh, pointing at a poster of Tong Po, their their champion. Saying, "I want to learn Muay Thai. I want to fight him." <laughs> like, how are you crazy American SOB? <laughs> and they make fun of him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for editing, right? <laughs> no, you should leave it. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, let's see here. Now, how many kickboxer movies are there now? Uh, five, I believe. Yeah. And most of them were pretty good, except that fifth one. Uh, what was oh, it called? Where he loses like a foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like they cut uh, Tong Po at the knees. You know, I work on ambulance. I mean, this this was a long time, long time ago, years ago. That's fun. It's funny you say that though. Cutting somebody off the knees. I was transporting this patient, and uh, it was a bilateral amputee, mm. and he had uh, had his legs cut off from the knee down. And as you're putting the straps on, you know, I didn't really think about this as I was doing it. But putting the straps on, I cinched the ones at the knees pretty tight. And sometimes you joke around with the patients not think not not thinking about it. I'm like, oh I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut to cut to cut you off the knees. <laughs> and I swear on my part my partner, I am I'm surprised that his tongue wasn't bleeding. Because he said he <laughs> I'm biting his tongue the entire time. <laughs> I would too. I was like, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off the knees there. It's like, whoops, you already are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm sure I'm going to get hate on that.
Yeah, everybody's so sensitive nowadays. Yeah. Like somebody you used to know a long time ago. <laughs> oh, God, let's hope people we know don't watch these sometimes. I hope they do. Yeah, I could just 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 picture it. Somebody coming on here saying, "Yeah, you're talking about me, aren't you?" <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Can still see your sister doing that too. By the way, yeah, don't put a pastor. Oh gosh, she's going to be seeing this probably. <laughs> <laughs> she's a match. Just don't say anything that you don't want him to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to the movie, though. Uh, he ev eventually meets, uh, who is that, Dennis Chan or something like that? Yeah, also known as Zian. Yeah, this is when he first meets <laughs> Zian. Hello, man. I'm telling you, man, it's greater than a three-headed cat. Good luck. You're leaving? Yeah, I got some business up the road. Uh, welcome, come along. Uh, no, I'll take my chance here. I'll be back in a few hours. By the way, oh, you here? <laughs> That's one heck of a welcome. And yeah. It's and uh, may I help you? Yes. Hmm. Uh, right. You ask what you want. I want done. I want to do the Really? Um, very good. So, Americans have swelled heads, especially when hanging upside down for too long. Is it just me, or is there a ton of st of stereotypes in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> Either uh, with the people in Thailand or with us, Americans. Yeah. Like, Americans yeah. have very swelled heads, especially when... I think that's a thing, saying that Americans are big headed. Yeah. I can't argue with that, really. I mean, most Americans, uh, well, I should say most real Americans be cocky. Uh, I kept the but, the, but the soundtrack to that movie is really good. Even the training montage, it, it just blends together well, I think. Which that's the next one. Sorry, couldn't figure out. Yeah. At least it's about yeah. That's his impressive kick. Yeah, that's his notorious helicopter kick. Yeah. 
Oh, this is a really, really, really good song. Want me to break my leg? Yeah, he kicked an angel enough and make, makes him cut the tree down with his legs. Mm hmm. That and leave my house. I mean, to break my leg? <laughs> I think it's funny how he pushes his dog. Anger is powerful. Yeah. And that's really bad, the fact that he's smiling like that. Yeah. Adrenaline is a crazy thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's like you don't feel it until afterwards. Yeah. And This part just looks painful. Yeah, definitely. I always enjoy all of his movies because whenever he's fighting, he always does that whole, you know, yeah. yeah. I think that really makes those movies that he makes, though. Like, yeah. Three. yeah. Adds the effect to it. And of course, uh, this part of the movie you can't forget either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can probably dance like that, but I choose not to. <laughs> Why I don't know, but I should try to find one of those shirts with like suspender clips on them. Yeah. I almost wonder if you can find anything like that for real. I just wonder, uh, how many chicks he got back in the day from being able to do all that stuff? Oh, probably a crap ton. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that was a really, really super good movie, though. I mean, it had a good storyline, at least. Yeah. Like, um... Oh, let's see here. I mean, there was nothing like crazy, like, stunts and stuff like that in it. I think most of the stunts and stuff he did himself, didn't he? Yeah. Like all the choreography and... Yeah. But I think they should have stopped making them at like part three, maybe. Yeah, big time. Once it got to part five, it almost looked like a a, a comedy. Yeah. And let's not forget about those spinoffs, too. Or uh, reboots, I guess you could call them. Oh, yeah, the kickboxer vengeance and stuff. It's like, how did Van, Van Damme go from getting shot in the head by Tung Po to magically being back, back alive to teach other people how to kickbox? Yeah. Yeah, he played Zan's role in that one. Yeah. And a former WWE superstar, Batista, plays Tong Po. Yeah, that's a, a new one. This is like my favorite part of that movie. This one. Find it here. Like when they start shouting, Nak Su Kao. Not so cow. Oh, yeah. White warrior. I bet he, uh, people's going to find that offensive. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's what they chant in prison when uh, old boy here fights? He's being held up? Probably. Ah, oh, that's my favorite part. He's like, cut the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's getting concerned. And the famous band. Yeah. Looks like he wants to leave, but he won't let him. Yeah. Like, nah, you're going to stick around and watch this. <laughs> oh, man, that was a breadbasket hit. Yeah. I think his famous helicopter kick's coming up, too. Like, you're going to make him look like a weakling now by grabbing a fire stick?
Did it just me or did it look like he was dancing when he did that spin kick? Yeah. <laughs> Here comes his helicopter kick. He's like, ah, screw this, I'm leaving. Yeah. I don't know, but my Lee was clapping like a. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go there. But <laughs> just a, uh, a certain type of people when they get their food stamps. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on people you all know you were thinking it too <laughs> oh gosh I can so see us getting uh Bunch of millenn- a bunch of millennials commenting on this one. Yeah. But you know what? That's what we do, though. It's honest. Checking it out. Checking out movies and reviewing them and just being honest, just like regular people. Yeah. I mean, we're just sitting here relaxing. Letting people see the real us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there should be more of that on YouTube. Like more like more people. It's supposed to be YouTube about you personally. Yeah. I mean it's not it's not about the lighting, it's not it's not about you know how fancy you can make your videos look and it's about being you and you know getting other people's input. Yeah. So it's like, you know, this is a good movie. I mean, overall, I mean, we've been watching it off and on since, what, high school? Yeah. Since we were, like, what, 15? Mm-hmm. In fact, I think that's when we met, wasn't it? Yeah. Now we're knocking at 40's door. Yeah. So, I mean, that's been over 20 years. Yeah. That's a long time. It's like, how many people out there who watch this, how many of you people out there have best friends that you've been friends with since high school and you're maybe... About the same, like it's been 15 years, 20 years, 25 years even. It's like you don't hear about that anymore. No, it is kind of rare, isn't it? I doubt. I definitely recommend that movie for people to watch. I mean, it's a good, nostalgic, old, late 80s movie. Yeah, that movie wouldn't hold up in today's standards with all the graphics and all that crap nowadays. But for what it is, like for what we grew up with, it's a classic where we come from. It's like now it's all about... Computer graft. Yeah, that CGI crap. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you know that they have software now? I'm trying to think. Of, I think I think it's called uh, some uh, fakes or something like that, or hmm. where they can actually take someone's face, like you or me, and it actually looks like that we're talking. Wow. Yeah, really us. Deep fake. Yeah, pe- uh, people should look that up. It's called deep fake. 
Hmm. And I mean, I've heard people, I mean, there were some pe people at my old employment, which I mean, they're a bunch of douchebags anyway. Just to get that out there since I don't, you know, work for them anymore and, you know, they know where they can take that job. But Someone at my work was showing that to me. It's called deep fakes. Hmm. And they can take the picture of uh what's that chick's name from Big Bang Theory? I don't know. I don't watch that show. Is it Kelly Kuako or something like that or She's like blonde or something like that. But anyway, her and that one Latin chick from Mo from Modern Family, hmm. like Varga or Vierga or whatever her name is. But anyway, um, they can take any person, like you know Pam Landerson. Uh, Almost anybody, in, in any actress, and they will take these uh, deep fakes, and it literally looks like it's them talk, like talking. They will use their voice. They they will take a reco recording of their voice, use the software, and it sounds like them talk, like talking, moving around, and. Huh make you know dirt like dirty adult films like that they're, they're they'll be able to take your face or my face put it on a adult entertainer's body and then make it look like so and so is doing whatever wow and it looks realistic like you cannot tell that it's fake wow so it may, it may it makes you think if they have that kind of, te of technology, is the stuff that we're seeing on te on television really really real? Yeah. Or is it all being you know staged? Just so we believe something's going on, but it's not. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually glad that we did this video, though, because I haven't seen many reviews on that movie. No, I went through the whole movie and you know done a review on it, but with all the crap, I'm sure we're going to get still from going over ten seconds on. On the movie, yeah, I'm sure they're probably gonna say you know copyright or whatever. Mm -hmm. Which is cra is crazy. I mean, whatever happened to freedom of speech and freedom of the press and yeah. Freedom of speech just don't stand anymore nowadays. Everybody's got to agree and be on the same page or it's arguing every time. I think the next uh the next video we do I think we're going to look at the woke culture. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that, you know, pe that people overindulge in. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants to say anything now nowadays because they're they're too afraid of hurting somebody's feelings or, you know. Yeah.
Everybody's afraid to go against the grain, so to speak. Oh, yeah, I think I mentioned this, but from way back when, um, in the military, with boot, with boot camp, um, like, you remember how they used to do, uh, shark, like, shark attacks and stuff like that, and go after them and start, you know, yelling in your face and, you know, calling you names, degrading you. You know, just good old fashioned wholesome boot camp. Like full metal, like full metal jacket type. Yeah. Yeah. They are no longer allowed to do to do in any of that anymore. It's changed. Well. Now they have to talk to them in a nice calm voice and say, Okay, recruit whoever. This is what you did wrong and this is how you do it right. Right. Yeah. I wonder why, uh, with the military the way it is now, why we're going to start losing every battle we fight. Yeah, I know. Because everybody, everybody wants to be somebody's friend, and nobody wants to be that authority figure anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's like when, um, if you've ever seen the movie Patton, this soldier is in a tent in a hospital with other men that's been shot, stabbed, you know, blown up. And this guy is uh, this soldier. He's sitting down, sniveling and crying, and the general comes up to him and says, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? He's like, it's just all this yelling. It's my nerve, sir. I don't think I can take any more of this. <laughs> Your nerves? You ain't nothing but a goddamn coward. Mm -hmm. And he takes his gloves, sla slaps the, the guy's helmet off, and then smacks him. And he tells the doctors, don't admit this yellow guy. Well, I mean, he said something else, but I'm trying not to get any uh, community strikes against me. But Yeah. Um, but he pretty much says, you know, I don't want this yellow guy stinking up this place of honor. A man who's been wounded in combat. Right. And he told him, he said, you know, you may get shot, you may die, but you're going up to the front. Either that or I'm going to shoot you right now. Mm -hmm. And he went to pull his gun, his gun out, and they got that soldier out of that hospital in a minute. Yeah. And even back then, they were trying to be woke because he had to apologize because the soldier he slapped was the son of a, a senator, a U.S. senator. Hmm. I'd like to see the feminists' reaction to a couple episodes of Married with Children. Yeah. That, that'd you, be interesting. One thing I've seen is this new word that a lot of people throw around. Have you heard the term, uh, nor a narcissist. Yeah. And they missed it, but yes. Yeah. And it's like they uh, look at it like, you know, anybody who wants to win or who is ambitious or, cock or cocky, mm -hmm. they're seen as, you know, a narcissist. Right. When, you know, it used to be that Americans loved winning. And wanted to win. Now you get a medal for participating. Right. Even in the military now, you get an army service ri ribbon just for participating in boot camp. Wow. And people get the National Defense Medal just for jo joining the military. 
And then if you're just in there for a cu- a couple of years, uh, honor and boy, you don't get in, tr- in trouble. You get a good conduct medal. Well, so that's three medals just for showing up. So what, do they pass out the Purple Heart if you jam your finger with your gun? Actually, if you receive any type of an injury while in a combat zone, let's say you uh, you fall and you get hurt while you're on a patrol. I'm not sure, but I have to look into it, but I think there are some people out there who have tried to get the per, the purple heart for that. Hmm. I'm not sure if it went through or not. It used to be you had to be shot or stabbed or beaten up by an in, an enemy or something or become a POW. Yeah. Now I do think they deserve medals for that for being a POW. Yeah. And, I mean, the heroism medals, like the Bronze Star, the Silver Star, the Legion of Merit, Distinguished Service Cross, Medal of Honor. Yeah. But there's so much stuff that they give people just for showing up. That's and they've had more medals since way back when. So you got private first classes who's only been in the military for six months or already walking around with like five or six medals on them. Yeah. And the Navy, they're not much better. Just, just for being stationed upon the ship, you get a medal. Well. And then they get met, get met, uh, get medals instead of getting, uh, like pins for marksmanship. Like if you are a pistol marksman, rifle marksman, that's two medals. So fresh out of Navy. Navy training, you could be walking around with, let's see here, sea service deployment, like if you get put aboard a a boat, uh, national defense, let's see, three, four, five, and they give away that Navy achievement medal, like, you know, just about anything. So you can have a brand, brand new sailor walking around with about six medals on them. Wow. I mean, you got some uh, real admirals and ad- and admirals even well, walking around and they have no heroism medals. So these generals and these admirals are getting promoted and they've got no real com- like combat experience. Well. But, but yeah, we should do some videos on the woke culture and how that's completely screw- screwed up our society. Yeah. But we're trying to make this a one hour video, so <clears throat> got about ten minutes, maybe. <laughs> yeah. you, uh let us know what you think of it. Uh what you, what do you think of the movie? What do you think about our upcoming videos should be? Um, you know, just 
Just say hi if you want to. Subscribe, share, like, comment. Anything but dislike. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I just can't believe how woke and messed up everything's gotten with our movies or TV shows, our government. Mm -hmm. Everything's just went to hell. Yeah, big time. One uh one more movie we might do is uh JFK. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty decent movie. You know they made a ton of movies about that. They made one that was called Kennedy. It was like a four part DVD series. I have that too. It's uh Martin Sheen playing JFK. Oh yeah. And they got one called Killing Kennedy. Got that one too. Of course, there's uh, thir 13 days. That's more about the, cu the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. The guy who played Bobby Kennedy in that one did a really, really good job. Yeah. That cheesy New England accent. Mm -hmm. It was like, how many more of our boys have to die over there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was waiting any minute for him to say, hey, Johnny, you want some clam chowder? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a mix between down south and freaking New York. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, it's pretty close to 53 minutes, so probably going to wrap this up. Let us know what you think about the movie, you know, or any ideas for any other reviews. We're also going to be doing some more shooting videos. We're going to try to get all, get all of us out shooting. Get some videos going. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, anybody wants to add anything? Go for it. No, I'm good. But we're going to cut it short now. And let us know what you think. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to our take on movies and politics and just, just about anything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do some more videos. And, well, Anything you want to say, man? Before I cut it short? Nope. Just thanks for watching. All righty. We'll catch you on the next one.